Hi everyone, I'm so excited to have the lovely Emily Stroya. Um, she's an intuitive, a spiritual medium, and an author, and a really amazing woman that I've um, uh, connected with online, and I'm super excited to uh, learn a bit more and share this with you about Emily and her journey in creating a successful business and doing really developing and um, sharing her gifts with the world. So hi, Emily. Thank you for having me on here. I'm so uh, to be talking with you today. Me too. There are all these amazing topics that we're all like super passionate about. <laughs> I know. I can just feel the energy like buzzing around like, woo. <laughs> yeah, like, yes, they're talking about this. So uh, I'd love for you to um, maybe talk a bit more about what you do and, you know, your work in the world uh, and who you are for anyone who doesn't know you yet. Yes. Well, thank you for introducing me. Yes, I'm Emily. Joya, and um, I am a spiritual teacher. Most of my work now has really kind of moved into the platform of teaching. Um, and I really started out as an intuitive growing up. I was always really intuitive and then moved into taking a psychic class in my early, early 20s um, out of curiosity because I just kept feeling this pull to psychics and the metaphysical arts. Um, so that's where my journey started with like my late 1920 you know like years and then um my mediumship gifts started opening up as i took these classes mm -hmm. so it's interesting how that happens because sometimes it's the other way around some people are very mediumistic growing up yeah. and then they get very psychic later um but for me it was quite the opposite um and i didn't even know that i could talk to spirit i'm just like what is this <laughs> like yeah. there's somebody's deceased grandmother is coming through and it's very <laughs> different from just feeling something intuitively mm. um so my work was mainly focused with clients one-on-one -on -one, and now it's both now we i work with clients one-on-one -on -one, and then i also teach and and have the intuitive soul school where students take spiritual development classes Mm. Yeah, it's so exciting how, because uh, sometimes people think that you kind of, you're born with all of this and you know all this or you mm -hmm. don't and then you can't like, but usually it's, it's, you start in one, one area and then yeah. the more you work on that, the more other areas develop too, I find it's like, it's, you open the door and then you become more sensitive and then you can kind of explore um, yeah. more from that. I, yeah, I feel like it's kind of like muscle groups, like for me, because I'm, I'm very, physically athletic so i feel like i sort of relate it very well to like exercise and why do you like yeah. are activating different muscle groups in your body when you work out um but maybe there's some that you don't use as often um and i feel like it's that way in a sense like you do have these these gifts um but you may not be activating them or using them mm -hmm. as often as maybe you would be using your intuition or um your healing gifts per se yeah. yeah, and I think for a lot of us, it's still practicing, right? To become better at something. It's something that we can sense, but I find a lot of times it's not, it's unless you've grown up in an environment where it's been super encouraged and everyone's been doing it a lot, I find at some point we do kind of shut off. And yeah. so then it's like coming back to that again. And then it's a bit of practice getting back into it and uh, expanding um, our gifts. But it's, yeah, I, and I think everyone can learn and develop, and it's it's not like we get. I I never feel like I get to a point where I'm like, oh, I'm done now. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with you completely. Um, I for like the first couple of years, I was obsessed with like being a perfect medium or the perfect intuitive, and I think somewhere I got this idea that like you just kind of get to a state of perfection with this work and then you're done mm -hmm. um then i quickly realized that that's completely bonkers and not possible like you're not going to be this perfect medium or intuitive but you will have your way of delivering the work to the world and that's what makes your you know your style unique and you know sort of your blueprint if you will mm -hmm. um so yeah i totally agree with you in that sense that it does take practice it does take listening and study and dedication to really just developing that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that you have to kind of constantly use, you mm -hmm. know, some, after a while we sort of just becomes like a small voice rather than like this very large part of you that you interact with on a daily basis. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think also growing as humans, because I find that although my work has probably is probably better now or more advanced than it was five years ago, I feel it's more maybe that I've grown as a human and I feel a lot more compassion. And because I've been through more stuff, I can feel like I, I can I can be more present with others when they go through their stuff. Oh, and, yeah. You know, and I'm a bit more relaxed about what you said, not doing everything perfectly mm -hmm. uh, and kind of getting out of my own way a little bit more and kind of oh gosh, saying yeah. that, gosh, I don't have to get all of it. I just have to show up fully. Yeah, totally. It's, it is that way. And it's more just you. I think that as long as you're evolving on, on a human level, mm -hmm. you will have a deeper relationship to your gifts. Mm -hmm. like, and that's something that, I've taught my students a lot is just as long as you're working with your own struggles and you're also evolving to a, a, a higher state of consciousness, it will reflect in your gifts mm. because how can it not, you know, your soul having a human experience. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a great thing to tell people too. I find because it's so important because sometimes we want to kind of bypass the human part and just oh, yeah. get the <laughs> spiritual part. <laughs> We, we just want to play in these realms and not in this realm. <laughs> yeah, like what? I have to integrate that in my real life? <gasps> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it helps me as when I started de like really committing to working on myself um, four or five years ago, it had such an impact on my mediumship, like mm -hmm. really changed my mediumship. But I was so much more confident in just gifts of mediumship. Um, and so I, I really feel that whatever you do on a personal level always comes back full circle to your spiritual, spiritual development. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. It's true. It's like, cause we're, we're whole, right? So every part affects the whole, like the yeah. whole of who we are. Yeah, um, it's all integrated. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and so because this is kind of a conversation also about business, um, <laughs> I would love for you to share a bit about how you started your business and how you've expanded within your business. Like how much do you use your psychic gifts or, you know, listening to your inner guidance or any kind of energy tools mm -hmm. to uh, create and expand your business? Mm. Um, I started my business about six years ago, going on seven soon. Um, and it was kind of a difficult decision for me at that point because my logic was like, are you saying like, <laughs> you're going to go and become a psychic medium and try to make a living doing this. Um, but it just was my intuition was like, just take the leap. Like it's going to be fine. Um, and I had uh, just graduated from college, so I was sort of torn between going to have a master's or going into the field of this work as, as like professional. Um, and so I just decided to heed the call and I went with it. Um, and I focused mainly like just here in New York City for a while. Um, and I always focused more like on the one-on-ones and doing offline work a lot, like workshops and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and totally shied away from any visibility, any type of social media, any mm -hmm. Facebook, like, <laughs> no. Um, and then my intuition just kind of kept coming in and bringing in this feeling that I needed to expand. Like, it was getting uncomfortable being just in that way. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't enjoying it as much as I had before. Um, and there was a part of me that felt constricted and I felt like I needed to expand to bigger, to up level. Mm. Um, and so I kind of consulted with my, my gifts, my intuition, and there was this push for me to start moving into the online space um, and playing with that. And I had this download that there is this thought in my head, like, oh, I'm going to start a school. But my logic was so against that. It was just like, how are you going to start an online school, Emily? Like, how's that going to happen? <laughs> um, but I just kept coming back to this idea that at some point I could have courses and I could teach people this work and I could reach a larger audience online. Um, and that there are people out there who are interested in it. It was just more about my reach. Like, how would I get them? Mm. So, um, that's kind of the beginning of it. Now we're moving more into like the 
really, I feel like start the start of something really great. There's a lot of really good momentum now building with this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I really focus a lot of my energy in learning entrepreneurship over the last couple of years, online entrepreneurship and just studying other people and who inspired me. Um, And it was a little different because I was so used to sort of playing in the spirit realms all the time. Um, you know, and so (laughs) I had to, I had to sort of take breaks from, from that and learn this other aspect of it. Um, and actually once I started understanding it more, it became very enjoyable for me Mm. to be able to bring that in. Um, and then we, we moved into launching the school like in January this year. And we had our first launch, which was very small. We had the psychic development course that was the first one we did. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so my intuition was like, you have to do this. Let's go. Hurry up. You're, like, you're wasting time. Well, let's go. Mm-hmm. You're sitting around with this idea, of, like playing with it too long. Um, and so it was really great. And then I ended up working with Isabel, uh, the coach, And she helped me put some strategies in place. And so then we launched the second course in May. That was the second time we did it. And that was great. We went and we had over like 60 students who enrolled in that course. It was such a huge um, leap from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we only had like about 15 or 16 students in the first one. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was really wonderful. It's been this really nice gradual building of spiritual business but also my intuition consulting with that on a regular daily basis um on the vision of how i want my work to be in the world Mm, that's so awesome and congratulations to growing your business in in that way and i think it's so interesting because i feel like every time it's time to grow it's like the the stuff we've been doing up until then it feels a bit small, like we're growing at like we need bigger clothes somehow. And yeah. it's like it doesn't feel as much fun or there's something around the clients we start attracting that something feels a bit off. And it's usually when it's time to like grow a little bit more so you can grow into that next step. Yeah. Um, and I love how our intuition usually tells us to do the stuff that we would never have wanted to do in the first place or even stuff that's like the opposite, what we feel comfortable doing. And you go, no. And then like, do it. <laughs> yeah. Resistance, right? Until we kind of give up and we go, okay, I'm just going to do this. I don't know. And then trusting that whatever you need is going to come to you. Cause it's like all new, isn't it? Like we don't know how to create anything online and we, it's like a different world. And to yeah. say, okay, I trust that if this is what I'm meant to do, um, the right support is going to come to me and I'll be okay and I won't die. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think it, it helps when you are learning entrepreneurship, using your intuition to even decide who you want to work with, who mm. will teach that to you, yeah. um, who is inspiring for you, um, a support of group of people mm. that can support you as you develop on, in a, as a spiritual entrepreneur, who also, they understand that mindset. Um, that's so important because there are so many entrepreneur programs out there and they're not all spiritual tied in. And Mm -hmm. I think that can be a little difficult because you sort of feel like you want to know the work, but you also, you need to be able to integrate this other part of you, which is that you have this holistic business or the spiritual work. Um, and sometimes in those communities, it only gets, it's only helpful to a certain point. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create like an intuitive business program for people like us, because it feels like otherwise we, we learn a bit of business here, we learn yeah. a little bit of the here. And then it's, we, at the end, we have a lot of knowledge, but we don't really know how to connect in with it. Because often it feels like some of the other stuff can feel a bit like superficial, like there's something deeper underneath that you don't get to. Uh, and I think because our intuition is so strong, we we really need to use it in our businesses. And I know so many of um, the women in my networks who are, they're not really doing the right yeah. business stuff, but they have amazingly successful businesses because they're always listening to their intuition yes. and they're like really going with the flow. And when you do that, there really are no rules. You can, you can really do what you want somehow. I mean, it's good to have some business knowledge, but I find that the, the things that work the best in my business are always the ones where my intuition just won't leave me and I can feel the 
the yeah. mess of the energy, right? Yeah, that's the best part. It's like mm-hmm. you have this sort of rough outline of, of maybe a strategy you're using or um, some new launch or something that maybe you're going into mm-hmm. or maybe just a new program like such as with you. Yeah. Um, but the information and the content that comes into it kind of just like builds. It's like it's, its own baby in a way. Like it, it new the ideas just start to flow in, and you get these new downloads. I mean, for me at least, I'll sit mm-hmm. there and sort of just sit with my intuition while I'm contemplating a new idea for something I want to launch, mm-hmm. um, and then I'll suddenly get like this new inspirational, like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do that, and and it just it, it's exciting, and then that, I think that was something that I thought, I feel like is missing a lot in this work, like as a spiritual entrepreneur, is that there isn't enough out there to help, to help someone bridge those worlds together. Like there's mm-hmm. so many of these programs of learning how to launch an online business, but there isn't that mindset aspect or the holistic aspect or the intuitive aspect. Well, what about this creative part of you? Like it's, mm-hmm. it has to be this very like rigid structure. I feel like it's just too much for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> too much for me can't just think about making two hundred thousand dollars in in three months like that's not the mindset i want to go after like i want to go into it because i want to touch someone's life or i want to help hold the space for them to find those tools within them so that they can live and build a legacy of their own that they feel good about yeah totally and it's so interesting because i find that when we reconnect with what we truly desire and we set that as our focus and we bring in all of us like the intuitive part the practical part the human part then when we actually reach that goal and even the journey through it i find so much more joyful and exciting and it feels like i feel like it's play time uh, and adventure even when it's hard you know, and we have all the resistance coming out yeah. and we're doing the, oh, okay, I know this serves a purpose, but it's really, really hard right now. Yeah. <laughs> like all of that still feels exciting. And I always feel like I'm on track when I do that. And when I try to like put, just pile a bunch of boxes together, it feels a bit empty. And I know those of my yeah. people who are super successful, who've built like amazing businesses, uh, the ones who've done it because they had like a, a a strong calling and they've honored that throughout the process, they are the ones enjoying that success and they feel, cause I think they're in alignment with it, but the ones yeah. who don't, it's like, a, you know, you build a building and if the foundation isn't strong, you can make, cause I think for some of us, it, it is important to make a certain amount of money so we can actually, you know, live and eat and all that and, and feel expansive. But, mm-hmm. um, but if you reach that point where you do have that money in your business and the momentum, but it, it's not really based on your true calling somehow and all yeah. parts of you haven't caught up, then it's going to feel empty at the end. Um, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I feel like I've been noticing that a lot now, just watching some online entrepreneurs. It seems like they're starting to integrate these, the woo-woo now in their businesses. Mm. Um, so it's like they're slowly kind of coming out of their own space of mindset and their own journey and bridging that world now in their work which is fascinating yeah so, yeah i mean being an intuitive entrepreneur is a phenomenal experience i feel like it's quite different from <laughs> regular entrepreneurship like you have a completely different facet you're playing with here mm-hmm. um, which is a gift um in itself to work with that in a business way yeah yeah, I think it's amazing. Like when I share my work with people, they're like, you do that online? Yeah. And I'm like, because I feel like it, it feels like being inside of a, a, like a movie or a fantasy or something where you go, well, actually, because the truth is we can do anything we want. Like if I want to do one-on-one, I can do one-on-one. If I want to do groups, I can. If I want to like travel, I can. If I want to work from home, like we, we can choose everything that we want in a rhythm that work. like if we have families or want to have lots of free time off, we can, uh, you know, if we want to have an office space, we can like, it's just, I, I just feel like, um, it's, it's like, you don't have to really sacrifice anything. It's like, we can just choose whatever we want. And when something doesn't feel fun anymore, we can actually let that go and we can invite something in. And I feel that's like, to me, that's just, it, 
almost feels like a fairy tale, although I'm living it and I know there are real people living it. But like seriously, most people don't even know this is a possibility, right? Yeah. Whenever I tell people I, I have like an online school and I teach and I'm a spiritual teacher, they look at me like, what? <laughs> yeah. Do what now? And I'm like, yeah, that's actually part of life, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's, it's great. And you're just able to kind of design it according to what feels good for you. Mm -hmm. on a spiritual level as well as what feels good on a business level. Yes. And that feels that I think that when we connect with that part and we we're actually, because it's like our souls guiding us to do this, then I feel like yes. we're expanding as much as we can and we're doing exactly what we came here to do. And also I feel that inspiring others, because when we share that we do this, there are people going, oh, mm -hmm. if you're doing that, then I can do that. And I love that feeling because it's, because I feel that this community that I'm part of and you're part of, it's like, it's very inclusive and it's very like, we're also holding space for each other and being really, I mean, I love when I see my people in my circles doing really well and launching new things. And I'm like, oh, cause there's no, I feel because we can touch such a global market that to me at least it doesn't feel like there's ever any competition because we all have our own personalities and there are so many people who need this work that, I don't feel like we're ever going to run out of clients somehow, <laughs> you know? No, I think it, it will always just constantly be growing and weaving in, into it and out of itself. Like, mm -hmm. it's just something, it's like a heartbeat. Like, it just continues to grow and it continues to beat. And um, you and everybody, it, you just sort of weave in and out of each other's work and energy fields and you support each other in those spaces while you grow in your own ways as a spiritual entrepreneur um and you end up bringing business to each other later on which is such a great thing yeah. um you know i can't like so many people have said oh you sent me a client or um i came from this person and you know mm -hmm. you end up sort of really supporting each other in that space while also growing in it so that's what's wonderful about it too yeah it feels very loving and very genuine it's kind of like we're saying all of us are saying we don't want to play by the rules. Like we're yeah. going to do it differently. <laughs> this is my design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Cause I don't really believe there's always a part of me that's been like, I'm sure I could have everything in my life. I don't have to let go of anything. You know, like either you spend time with your kids or you have a, a job you love. I'm like, no, I'm yeah. sure there's a way. And I remember when I first discovered the online world, I'm like, I'm sure someone has figured this out somewhere. I'm not going to find that person. <laughs> then you do, yeah. you know. <laughs> I think I did the same thing. I was like, what is this magical world here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like a land of magic. Like you literally just get to design your life the way you want it to. And, and yeah, that's, that's something I've been learning a lot this year as I've moved from the offline to online more is now I'm, oh, I can – go and fly somewhere for a week and I can still work if I, you know, set my hours and I can still enjoy my life, but I can enjoy it in another space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what's great. Like there's this freedom to it and also this magic because even in your, even in your experiences, you're constantly working. Like yeah. there is this constant downloading of information that will always be generated for your business. Mm -hmm. somehow some sort of new inspirational idea or a course or a program or a price change or something like there will be some new marketing thing maybe that will show up in your awareness mm -hmm. um and that's what i love about it is that you don't have to be in this contained space to be evolving on a spiritual level but also on a business level Mm, yeah, totally. And I feel like travel is such a great way because it's like you're in between spaces. I love taking the train, for example, because it's, yeah. I, don't know, I feel like I'm in a different energy altogether yeah. in between. And then I always have great ideas and inspiration. And every time I feel like my business, you know, when, when you start feeling a bit like mm, I'm trying a little bit too hard, it feels a bit constrictive. I always go, okay, before I used to push through, because we've learned how to, you know, you push through, right? And you struggle and anyway, and the hard working <laughs> stuff. But, you know, you, do, you can only do that so many times before you go, actually, this is not working. And because we work with intuition, you can't really, you kind of have to do it, right? Yeah. Um, and so now I know there's no point in doing that. It's like, okay, what would bring me joy now? What would yes. feel good now? And I go and do that. So if that's like, swimming up in the mountains or going on a trip. I do that. And then it's like, I get back into the flow again. And 
it's so interesting because sometimes it's like, oh, I can't really afford traveling now, but I know that's what I need to do. So I kind of take the leap anyway, trust, mm -hmm. and then I'm back in the flow and more clients connect in and then it's, it's good again. So it's like yeah, that's living that. Fascinating aspect. I totally, like, I understand that because if I feel like a lag in my work or something, like I'll look around in my environment and like, okay, well, what needs to change right now for me so that I can be back in that flow and that state of working with spirit and working with my clients to the best of my ability. And I might like declutter in my home or mm. clear out some stuff or go to a new place in the city. Um, just sort of pull on the inspiration around me, changing the environment in some way, I think has a huge impact. Um, for us, yeah, as spiritual entrepreneurs big time, because we're not always gonna be in this office space or co-working space, and that's not what we're designed for. So our working space is the world, mm -hmm. um, and that's how we, we, we help consciousness, because through our gifts, um, but we have to be in touch with the world for us to bring in this new energy. Yeah, I love that because that's it's like it's like being in touch also with the creative parts of us. And I find that when we we're in the same space because we struggle with the same stuff yeah. as all people, right? So if we do the same thing too rigidly, it's like, oh, I don't feel inspired anymore. Well, yeah. no wonder. Go do something else. You know, yeah. it's usually something completely different from from work. I find or from business and movement because you mentioned movement and moving oh, your body. Yeah. Oh, such a great uh, great way to shift the energies, and then you come back and you go, oh feels like so much more fun and I think that's a great way to kind of retrain ourselves to actually come back to what feels joyful and easy and when we do that it's like wow so much more expansive and more powerful too because people can feel that even through the screen right when we're in that energy yeah um when you have that big rise of energy and you're so excited about a new program or something they can, they can feel that because those are your gifts coming through it's not even I feel like it kind of transcends the human experience because that's just really your soul coming out at that mm -hmm. point. Um, and I, I wondered for a while if there, if there was like, I was like doing something wrong because it was, I was so used to this like nine to five, like because of the military the, in the structure and that discipline, like you do work, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, but then I realized what I was doing was work in a different way, mm -hmm. self-work or something that I was doing to care for me, but it was going, it would always reflect back into, and I guess that starts with our conversation mm -hmm. earlier, where it always comes full circle back to connecting with your gifts while you're connecting to yourself, which will always reflect in your business mm -hmm. um, as you help other people. Yeah, it's such an amazing journey because as we grow our businesses, we grow ourselves and as we grow ourselves, we grow our businesses and it's, it's like, it's, it's you, very intertwined, it's very yeah. linked. like it's not, oh, I'm just going to go to my job today and kind of zone out like you, yeah. <laughs> don't do that, you're like in this very like um, high vibrational state of awareness all the mm. time, you know. Yeah, it's quite demanding in that way. I find, I've, I find that you have to really kind of be willing to rise through your stuff. It doesn't mean, because I know when I first started my, my business, I'd be like, I'd be like, you know, pushing my husband around, wanting the space to be perfect with the kids. And like, I had to meditate for this one before. And he's like, Karina, just work with what you have. That's what you bring into your work. Like, don't want exactly. things to be how I imagine a spiritual entrepreneur, right? So yeah. I just sit there and incense and silence. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is so true. You just make do with what you have. And it's still going to work. I mean, you could, your office space could be a park bench outside. Um, yeah. It's literally just, you create it. Yeah, and I feel that once we get over that, we can meditate anywhere, we can do our work anywhere. Yeah. And I feel like, although I do enjoy, you know, having a nice space to work from, I can work from anywhere, like with people behind me, like yeah. I really don't care because I'm really dedicated to what I'm doing. Yeah. And I know that, you know, spirit doesn't need everything to be perfect or we wouldn't be doing anything. <laughs> no, because you have that link already, like you'll always have that link to them, you know, mm. it's, it will always be there. You'll always have that awareness. And I think we place too much emphasis on things being looking a certain way based mm. on some type of schema, who knows, but it's just, even for myself, like if it doesn't feel inspiring to me, I'll just 
go somewhere else or I'll take a break from it or, you know, because I know that I need that for me to, to thrive in what I'm doing. Mm, yeah. And sometimes it's not so much the number of hours we spend, but it's the energy we put into it. Because you, I know sometimes when I share something on Facebook and I feel super inspired, I write like one sentence, one photo, and so many people comment. And then I can do the, I'm working really hard and I'm creating something. And it's like, oh, no one's actually seeing this. It's like invisible because my energy is probably not in it. Um, <laughs> so it's yeah. great. It's really interesting. It, it's so challenging. And uh, I think it's so great because we're always learning and always like unlearning the old ways. And it's, wow, you really have to be up for that though. <laughs> it's a different lifestyle you know mm -hmm. it's a completely different mindset too like it's yeah really just quite a it's different from this traditional way of work mm -hmm. you know it's, it, and it, it's a different mindset completely it's, it's just a different ball game all around um but the best part is if you let go of those things those old rigid thoughts or belief systems or ideas on how it should look um and you just kind of surrender into it the way you surrender to your gifts i think it it is so much easier so mm. much so yeah much helpful to just move into that space like okay i did this work today and i feel really good with that um because i'm constantly dedicating myself to this work you know yeah and even, i think that's even in your experiences like with your kids or your family i'm sure that there are moments when you're like you get these intuitive impressions or feelings or um, realizations and then that somehow gets trickled back into what you deliver to your clients. Yeah, definitely. I feel like sometimes when I'm like resisting because I'm like, you know, telling my kids to go do something else because I'm doing the real work and they'll say something or do something and I'm like, oh, okay, so this is the real work. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the message you had to hear for today. Exactly. So it's always so great because it's never about anything outside of ourselves. It's always that. So yeah, definitely. And because I think a lot of my, um, a lot of my clients are moms or they have young kids and, and like I can totally, uh, it's really helped me on, on like I can feel, I, yeah. I know what that feels like. And it's yeah. like uh, just the more compassion, I think, for the wanting to do everything and be everything. And, and so I feel like just all of everything in my life has really helped me and expand my work so it's mm -hmm. uh, it's all good i guess integrating the human parts I think that's actually, yeah i think that's really key is, is having compassion for yourself mm. as you do it um because i feel sometimes too being a spiritual entrepreneur you might compare yourself to someone else um or some how someone else is doing it or something yeah um or like life isn't set up in the right ways or you know like all these other parts of your life are still getting sorted out but here you are trying to build this business that you love based on your gifts mm -hmm. um and i think once it, you just have compassion for, for where you are absolutely i think it, it helps a lot to sort of redirect your energy and change that perspective a little bit yeah that's a great point and it kind of releases the tension because yeah. because otherwise it's like you feel like oh i should be doing this or maybe my shit but in reality um i don't think our businesses are going to make or break it just because you don't have the right opt-in or because you didn't put the right photo on your header like it's really not about that most of the time i get so tired of, of like all these things like oh you need to make sure that there's five million ways for somebody to sign up for your e newsletter <laughs> If they're going to want your work, they're going to want your work. Like, if there, as long as there are ways for them to opt in, uh, if there are ways for them to reach you and connect with you, if you're putting your work out there and you're delivering your message to the world, if you don't have it all together tomorrow night, like, it's not the end of the world. Like, you're going mm -hmm. to get there. Um, and that's something I think, too, is we, we put so much pressure on ourselves to have it all just to look aligned. Yeah. You know? But as long as you feel aligned with it, with where you are, mm -hmm. the, the look of it, it will get to that point where it will reflect it in the same way. Yeah, totally. And I think because of our work, uh, all, our clients are super intuitive and they can feel the energy. So if they can feel your energy and it inspires them and they feel good, mm -hmm. 
then they're probably not going to really notice all those kind of details that yeah. weren't that yeah, important. We were, like obsessing over it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the energy is really what matters. I mean, when I first started, I had this blog and it didn't really didn't look like much. Um, and people would just find me. I have no yeah. idea how, and they would just go, Oh, I felt really inspired. So seriously, I think that's really important to remember that, um, it's our energy mainly yeah. that doesn't attract our clients. So, so do that first and then you can kind of work on your website in the, yeah, your energy is your brand. It is. <laughs> and you can't fake that, right? It no, has to be true and it has no to be No one else is going to replicate it. No. <laughs> no, you might as well just focus on that. Like, I feel like that's something that helps me a lot growing in my work is I would freak out over, like, all these other things that entrepreneurs would talk about. Like, you have to make sure your website looks a certain way and your mm -hmm. brand looks this way and all these things. And, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a lot of time and I feel like that takes away from the work a little bit. Like I want to yeah. just get my work out there. I want to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and so as long as I feel like it feels aligned to where I am right now, um, mm -hmm. that's okay with me. And I know that I can change it. It's not like permanent. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's an evolving process. Like you'll see people change their brands several times um, or their, their colors or their logos mm -hmm. or their photos. And um, yeah, as long as you're just delivering and being authentic, to your gifts and, and who you, you know the, the world and how you're serving that's mm -hmm. what matters that's your, yeah that's, that's your brand yeah. yeah and it's like always coming back to what matters the most and then do that like set your priorities and then do the rest at the end instead of because yeah. otherwise we, we can find ourselves just getting overwhelmed by details instead of actually doing the real work and uh yeah it's, it's, like, yeah i can't tell you how many times i've had people come to me like oh how do I do this or that? I'm like, look, just put something out that feels somewhat good for you right now. What's really important is you just being able to deliver your gifts to the world. As long as you're doing that, like you can find, find fine tune all the other things as you go along, right? Just about driving the car. If it's long as it's drivable, like just get it going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great example. That's true. You'd be like, oh, maybe I need to repaint Polish it. it or something, right? <laughs> It's drive. You can drive it. Like go. Yeah. <laughs> you can add it to it later. <laughs> oh, it that's great advice. I love that. Oh well, thank you so much, Emily. And I, uh, we could talk for hours, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but if um, so, where can people find you? And what are you doing right now? Where people could like you know sign up for something and work with you and learn more about their gifts and you know expand. Mm -hmm. Um, people can go to my website, emilystorena.com. That's where like uh, a lot of more of my one-on-one work is, um, and kind of just get an overview of who I am and what I do. And then if like they wanted to sign up for a course or any type of spiritual development, um, courses or classes, the intuitive, intuitive soul school.com is where all of the courses are. And we're going to launch a new course very soon, which I'm very excited about. Oh, great. Um, it's all on, on the soul development and remembering the soul and really bringing forth and calling forth your gifts and stepping into that in this life. So that's something really exciting that's going to be coming out soon. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, it sounds really exciting. And there's just so much to pour into that, right? And, to, and it feels like such an important thing, too, for people to kind of reconnect with that so that they can do what they're here to do and, and really shine and expand in yeah. that, too. I'll, and there will be links underneath this video for anyone who wants to get in touch with Emily. And you can find her on Facebook. Um, and I'll put, yeah. yeah. Facebook is always a great place to connect. And for those of you who are interested in uh, learning more about my new program, so it's uh, Embrace Your Purpose, an intuitive business program for conscious entrepreneurs. So it can be intuitives, uh, healers, uh, sensitive people, empaths, can also be creative people like artists and writers and really anyone who wants to invite in more of their intuitive, sensitive gifts and the, the kind of that expanded consciousness into doing business so it's going to be like a it's a mix of energy tools like connecting in with your you know your soul clients and creating programs or redoing pro programs or offers that you have now so that you feel really really clear on what what you're here to do and how to connect in already with the people who need your gifts 
Uh, and it's also like a mastermind because it's like a six month uh, mastermind where we also get connected with each other. And I find that accountability and having someone hold space is super important when we get you know, overwhelmed and lost and when the resistance comes up because uh, it always does, especially when we're launching something new or <laughs> you know, changing something or just up leveling. Uh, and I find that that's something that I offer myself <laughs> because seriously, if I didn't have like a support group, I would not be doing as much and having as much fun doing it as I do now. Um, so it's also like, you know, clearing your energy so you can stay really uh, focused, but yeah, it's like expanding time so that you can really have the impact and reach as many people as you feel called to reach. So yeah, one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and then monthly live calls and I have two guest teachers coming in and yeah, it's going to be amazing. We start end of September and um, yeah, if you want to know more about that i'll leave the link below this video or get in touch with me and i'd love to chat with you and connect with you because i really want to call in the women who feel called to do this work or expand their work so um yeah it has to feel really good um on all ends so i don't know if you want to say anything else emily before we kind of wrap this up <laughs> No, I'm excited for your new program. It sounds wonderful. Thank you. I'm super excited about your next course in your in your soul school as well. It's Yay. all new things. I know. It's great. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun creating too, isn't it? And like the whole process of of putting something new into the world. And well, thank you so much, Emily, for taking the time. And thank you to everyone watching this. If it resonates, please leave us a comment. Uh, and share with anyone who needs to know a bit more about, you know, being inspired by um, intuitive business and doing business in a different way that really suits us in a holistic way. Thank you, Karina. Thank you. Talking with you. Thank you. Bye.